There are many great video game protagonists. Think Solid Snake, Samus Aran, or Sonic the Hedgehog. On the flip side, there are also many rubbish video game protagonists. Think Bubsy the Bobcat, Aiden Pierce, or Sonic the Hedgehog. No matter whether we love or loathe these heroes, however, they generally feel appropriate for the game they star in, having been woven into the narrative that has been set out for them. This isn't always the case for every character, though, and there are times we all reach the end credits after 30 hours of play only to think, Really? I played this whole game as that guy? Sometimes the character will overstay their welcome in a series, will hog valuable screen time that a far more interesting supporting character deserves. All their personal goals completely contradict the nature of the gameplay. Not to mention all the grunting brown-haired white dudes who could be replaced with a rag and a stick and would have been way more engaging. Now, to be clear, some of these characters are not bad by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, they're kind of brilliant in a great many ways. It's just that the other characters in the game kind of stole the show. So I'm Ewan, this is What Culture Gaming, and here are 8 video games where you play as the wrong character. Number 8. Red Dead Redemption 2 Who you played as? John Marston. Who you should have played as? Sadie Adler. Whoa, whoa, wait, yay, halt to them pistols, Tex. This entry is neither an attack on Arthur Morgan nor John Marston. Arthur's story is touching and devastating, and his character is engaging and complex. Playing as John in the epilogue serves as both a perfect postscript and payoff to Arthur's arc, and the setup to his own in the original Red Dead Redemption. However, Rockstar missed a trick with the post-ending free roam. After the game's final mission, in which Micah Bell is finally given what for, roll the clip over and over again, oh, that's good. John and Abigail marry and settle down on their ranch at Beecher's Hope, while bounty hunter and all-around hellcat Sadie Adler heads off to pursue further adventures and live the life of a gunslinger. Why then, once the credits have finished rolling, are we still playing as John Marston? If he's finally settled down to tend to his ranch and argue with his wife, with $20,000 in his pocket no less, it feels somewhat dissonant to continue playing as him running across the west, robbing trains and shooting dudes in the face. A much more savvy move would have been to switch the perspective one last time, and go to Sadie, now left to her own devices on the frontier. Ah, uh, well, single player Sadie DLC anyone? Number 7. Batman Arkham Knight Who you played as? Batman Who you should have played as? The Bat Family the first act of Arkham Knight, the final entry in the critically acclaimed Batman Arkham series, ends with what seems like a very cheeky twist. Upon fighting through the Ace Chemicals plan to neutralize Scarecrow's fear toxin, the bad comes face to face with the Joker, who seemingly shoots him dead. We then immediately begin playing as Jim Gordon, investigating a site where several prisoners are exhibiting Joker-like traits. This would have been a perfect opportunity to remove Bruce Wayne from the equation and to play as the rest of the Bat family on an investigation into just what the hell happened and as a quest for revenge against the seemingly resurrected Joker. Unfortunately, no such bold move takes place as this just turns out to be a flashback and within five minutes we're playing as Batman again, escaping from Ace Chemicals having suffered a hallucination. We're back to the same old sandbox with the the same old hero kicking the same old villains in the face. The remainder of the game is by no means bad, but it could have been so much more interesting had we had access to a host of new characters with all their respective abilities, delving into Batman's legacy as one man threatens to burn it to the ground. Imagine being able to switch between the likes of Robin, Nightwing, and Oracle, all with their own gameplay mechanics and skills, while trying to solve the mystery of the Arkham Knight and Azrael trying to claim the Batman's mantle for his own. Well, imagining is all you can do, seeing as it sadly didn't happen, and we got an ending where Batman effectively goes, lol, see you later fam, and leaves his allies to fester in emotional turmoil. Dick. Number 6. Halo 4 Who you played as? Master Chief. Who you should have played as? Literally anyone else. At the end of Halo 3, series protagonist John 117 enters cryonic sleep and is left drifting through the endless void of space, seemingly forever. Whilst a little bit on the gloomy side, this could have been a fitting and poignant ending for the central character of an epic universe-spanning trilogy. The next two installments, Halo 3 ODST and Halo Reach, focus on original characters and explore different events in Halo's timeline, a welcome change of pace, it must be said. However, Microsoft felt that their beloved icon needed to come back and form 343 Industries a division dedicated to continuing Bungie's series after they up and yeeted themselves over to the Activision gravy train. Yeesh. 
Well, anyway, Halo 4 was born, Microsoft made loads of money, and the franchise didn't budge one solitary inch. While the game itself was enjoyable enough and played as well as any previous Halo installment, except the multiplayer, the reintroduction of Master Chief was a step back for the franchise. A new protagonist would have breathed some new life into the series, but 343 Industries plowed on with Master Chief's story, resulting in a franchise which feels like it's refusing to move on or innovate where its narrative is concerned. Number 5. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist Who you played as? Sam Fisher Who you should have played as? Isaac Briggs 2013's Splinter Cell Blacklist marked the first and only title in the core series that did not feature veteran actor Michael Ironside as the iconic Sam Fisher. Feeling he couldn't bring anything new to the role and with Ubisoft wanting to make use of rapidly developing motion capture technology, Ironside passed the torch to Eric Johnson, known for his starring turn in 2007's Flash Gordon TV series. Johnson's performance was criticized by a lot of outlets, who felt he failed to replicate the charm that Ironside had previously brought to the role. And you know, the fact he was playing a 50 odd year old man. A stupid, sexy 50 year old man. A better idea would have been to focus the game more on Isaac Briggs, Fisher's CIA colleague who accompanies him on many missions in the game and is the second player character in co op. With Ironside having passed the torch to Johnson and the character of Sam Fisher now being in his mid 50s, there was no better time for the torch to be passed in universe to Briggs and continue his journey journey as the series protagonist. You could have even had Einstein's Sam Fisher narrating the game and helping Briggs through the motions. It was a no-brainer. Number 4. Fallout 4. Who you played as? The sole survivor. Who you should have played as? Who you wanted? Bethesda's Elder Scrolls and Fallout series, before they balled it all up and attracted the ire of the entire world with Fallout 76, dear god, were exemplars in player-based character building. Although all the games had central plots and ultimate goals, the player was free to sack these off and explore the game's respective worlds, joining whichever factions they wanted to and taking on quests as they saw fit. While this was still very much an option in Fallout, 4, the game's central narrative felt massively at odds with its explorative mechanics. Playing as one half of a couple coming out of stasis to find that their infant son had been taken from them, they begin a desperate search across the wasteland to find and reunite him. As any parent knows, the idea of their child being kidnapped would push everything else out of their consciousness entirely, and their focus would solely be on trying to get them back. This makes venturing off the beaten track to engage in quests where you look for paint to help decorate a stadium feel somewhat out of place. And you end up exploring because you feel like you should rather than because the game actively encourages it. Couple this with a fully voiced character and significantly more limited dialogue options, and the role-playing aspect of this role-playing game feels very, very underwhelming. Literally any other character, or at least any other overarching goal, would have been more appropriate for a series where distractions reign supreme. Number 3. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 Who you played as? Generic CIA man number 5. Who you should have played as? Farah Kareem. Infinity Ward's much-anticipated soft reboot of the Modern Warfare series promised a more mature, sensitive commentary on the nature of war in the current global political climate. The actual story's gameplay executed this fairly well, but the narrative was a hotbed of old military cliches and historical revisionism. And it still wasn't as bad as the multiplayer. Anyway, the single player. While it feels like a bit of a rug pull that Captain John Price doesn't feature as a playable character, focusing the SAS storyline instead on Sergeant Carl Garrick, later known as Gaz, that's far from the worst storytelling offense the game commits. Far worse is the heavy promotion of Urzik rebel leader Farah Karim, only for her to be completely thrown under the bus in service of another stock protagonist with a stupid mustache. Yes, I know it's better than mine. No, I don't remember his name. Axe something, like the body spray. I don't know. The ability to play as Farah suggested an opportunity to finally see war zones through the eyes of a character native to the region, with a genuine investment in the war they're fighting. Instead, Farah is relegated to one gimmicky flashback mission and an interactive cut seen in the finale, and the rest of the Middle East segment of the game centers around Alex, who just isn't nearly as compelling. Number 2. Far Cry 4 who you played as? AJ Gali. Who you should have played as? Mohan Gali. After the strong narrative focus and exceptionally memorable characters in Far Cry 3, it looked like Ubisoft had happened upon a winning formula. Alas, this was not so. Far Cry 4, despite its effective central conflict between rebel leaders Sabal and Amita, featured a knockoff vast in the form of pagan Min and a big block of polystyrene for a playable character. AJ, unlike previous protagonist Jason Brody, had no real arc and didn't feel like he grew as a character at all. The most interesting character in the entire game was that of 
AJ's father, Mahan, and he was already dead by the time the game started. Being able to play Mahan's story, from disillusioned royal guard to founder of rebel group The Golden Path, would have had significantly more narrative heft, especially when it came to his gradual downfall and descent into madness and murder. The gameplay would have remained intact for the most part, starting out with a fledgling group of rebels with limited resources and incrementally taking back control of Kriat, much like AJ and the Golden Path do in the game proper. And number 1. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Before I get into this, there are major spoilers for Jedi Fallen Order right now, so if you haven't finished the game, please go away now. Go. Go through the door. Please. Who you played as? Cal Kestis. Who you should have played as? The Second Sister. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order was a much needed breath of fresh air for Star Wars games after the likes of Battlefront and its pileup of controversies. Inspired by Metroidvania titles in the Dark Souls series, Fallen Order allowed the player to feel like a Jedi not simply through button mashing and overpowered attacks, but by encouraging finesse and a mastering of the powers they had to hand. The exploration of the Star Wars universe shortly after the execution of Order 66 is also a setting well worth delving into. Arguably the weakest aspect of the game, however, is protagonist Cal Kestis himself. Whilst likeable enough, the young Jedi is stuffy and somewhat generic, and though his traumatic past is genuinely interesting to explore, he's also overshadowed by pretty much everyone else in the game. A much more interesting protagonist would have been Trilla Siduri, the Imperial Inquisitor who serves as the antagonist of the title. Once a Jedi Padawan herself and having survived Order 66, her betrayal at the hands of her former master has her succumb to the dark side, taking the title of Second Sister and setting out to hunt down surviving Jedi, including Kestis himself. Seeing the story unfold from the perspective of a high-ranking member of the Empire while still retaining the game's rewarding mechanics that have made for a far more memorable story. Like, go and make the flashbacks the main first entry in the series, then do Cal stuff later on. Although that would mean we lost BD1 until the sequel. Oh god, don't make me choose. 